What's tea, children? My name is Darius Parker, BKA Halle Berry Derry, and welcome to Royal Remembrance, honoring our queer ancestors only at Royal Emerge. And if you are not following us just yet, if you have not hit that follow, like, share, all those buttons to get all this good loving at Royal Emerge, you need to make sure you do so because we got some good stuff cooking up for y'all. This segment and segments to come will teach our queer babies where we've come from to know exactly where we're going. And today, we're talking about gender-bending singer and performer during the Harlem Renaissance, Gladys Bentley. Drop those flame emojis in this video, y'all. Show all that love to Miss Gladys. Bentley, born August 12, 1907 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the daughter of George L. Bentley, an American, and his wife, Mary Motte, a Trinidadian. In Bentley's Ebony article, she wrote about trouble in the home as she was growing up and the relationship between her and her mother. She was the eldest of four children in a low-income family in North Philadelphia and always felt unwanted or rejected because her mother desperately wanted her to have been born a boy. Quote, when they told my mother she had given birth to a girl, she refused to touch me. She wouldn't even nurse me. And my grandmother had to raise me for six months on a bottle before they could persuade my mother to take care of her own baby, end quote. She believed that growing up feeling rejected shaped her behavior. She never wanted a man to touch her, hated her brothers, wore boys clothes, and had a crush on one of her female teachers in elementary school. Okay, Ms. Gladys. She moved from Philadelphia to Harlem, a neighborhood in New York City at the age of 16. She heard that Harry Hansberry's Clam House on 133rd Street, one of the most notorious gay speakeasies, needed a male pianist. This is when she began performing in men's attire white full dress shirts, stiff collars, small bow ties, oxfords, short time jackets, and haircuts straight back. Also, where she was backed up by a chorus line of drag queens, and here she perfected her act and became popular and successful. Her career skyrocketed after this point, y'all. She played piano and sang her own raunchy lyrics to popular tunes of the day in a deep, growling voice while flirting with women in the audience. She sang loud, and her vocal style was deep and booming, sometimes using a growling effect and imitations of a horn. I'll make you miserable, treat us women like you do. I don't want no man that I got to give my money to. In August 1928, she signed with OK Records, and recorded eight sides over the course of the next year up until 1929. In 1930, she recorded a side with the Washboard Serenaders for Victor and later recorded for the Excelsior and Flame labels. Her vocal range was wide, as can be, heard in her recordings. She mostly sang in a deep low range, but also reached high notes. <laughs> That big gorilla, a woman killer, and I ought to know. Bentley's performances appealed to black, white, gay, and straight audiences alike, and many celebrities attended her shows. Langston Hughes recorded his reaction to the beginning of Bentley's career success. According to a belated obituary published in 2019, the New York Times said Bentley, who died in 1960 at the age of 52, was Harlem's most famous lesbian in the 1930s and among the best known black entertainers in the United States, period. Gladys Bentley will always be remembered by Royal Emerge and by the LGBTQIA community forever and always. Ms. Gladys, thank you so much for your contributions to history, to culture, and to all of us. We thank you, we love you. I'm Darius Parker, BKA Halle Berry Derry, and I'll see you next time, children. Peace out.